Lately, there's been a lot of talk about going to the bathroom, how we should do it, if it's safe, and what it does or doesn't have to do with our genitals. <coughs> Usually when I go to the bathroom, it's because an organ in my body needs to expel something out of a hole in my body. There are other reasons, like to socialize, wash my hands, clean a stain off my clothes, check myself out in the mirror to get seaweed out of my braces, but mostly the holes need to direct byproducts of my human functioning into this bowl shape, or this one. I squat, expel, then push a button or handle, and an incredible plumbing system designed over time by all these other humans carries my excretions to a water treatment facility. Before all this, going to the bathroom was what public health experts call open defecation, like my dogs. No shame, no privacy, no need for it. Then came the advent of ceramics, pots and the like made by heating clay until it hardens. Because they could hold liquid, our ancestors were like, oh my goodness, I am gonna poop in this. I'm sure you can imagine the convenience of no longer having to be in the cold or rain, outside with predators or in the darkness, to have a pot stored under your bed and Cardio! Just toss the contents out the window to the street below. According to Julie Haran in her Toilet History book, when a man and woman walked down the street, it was polite for him to get hit with the contents of the chamber pot and spare the woman. The chamber pot created all sorts of new social customs. Renting out potties for parties, molding or painting people they dislike in them to piss and shit on, expecting slaves or servants to empty the waste of the wealthy, but locking up the excrement of the wealthy royals so that thieves couldn't steal their prestigious poop. Speaking of the royals, for more than 400 years, there was an honorable position in the court of the English king called the groom of the stool, who got to wipe the king's ass and in these intimate moments be his advisor and confidant. The position wasn't humiliating, but there was certainly an element of seclusion to the task. In fact, urinating and defecating became private, hush hush, across all classes. For example, there were chamber pots that read, keep me clean and use me well and what I see I will not tell. And there was a human bathroom, a man who'd walk around with a chamber pot and for a token, set it down and create a tent with his cloak for private use. See no poop? Hear no pooping, speak nothing of poop. Growing up, I learned the unsaid practice of looking under the stalls and listening for others to leave the bathroom before flatulating or defecating, and if it was a matter of unloading emergency, I'd flush the toilet to hide the sounds. Even though there's some of the most universal sounds in the world. This is a photo of the toilet I, Dr. Doe, used for a month while living in a zoo in Mexico. The owner of the zoo asked me to write instructions on the outside for how to use it properly, but since I don't speak Spanish and most of their visitors don't speak English, I went with a simple image instead. Urine goes in the front hole and feces goes in the back hole, pads, tampons, etc. go into the container nearby. No designation of race, gender, or sex like these other signs from our history or worldwide that mandate who uses the bathroom rather than how they're used. Like the U.S. Uniform Plumbing Code 413.3, which states separate toilet facilities shall be provided for each sex. According to Harvard professor Jeannie Souk, the growth of women's presence in public life led to the desire to protect them from the crude dangers of the male world. There was this attitude that women were unfit for the occupation of civil life, and so if we're gonna let them into factories, offices, libraries, department stores, banks, and on trains, then we need for them to have designated areas and entrances. This is where we get to present-day bathroom politics. In some places, stick figure with the skirt means safe space and bathroom for women. In other places, it means toilet for a person with a vagina or female designation on their birth certificate. David Cohen explains in his paper the stubborn persistence of sex segregation that politically, sex refers to apparent biological distinctions, whereas gender refers to the attributes society generally associates with biologically different sexes. So if a bathroom is sex segregated, Buck Angel who has a vulva and a vagina is expected to use the stick figure with a skirt bathroom. But if a bathroom is gender segregated, then Buck Angel is expected to use the stick figure with pants bathroom. Other places like here in Missoula, Montana, female, male, intersex, feminine, masculine, gender nonconforming, queer, etc. can choose any public stall, trough, or urinal and use the bathroom in peace. I'll read part of the ordinance to you. The city finds that discrimination in the areas of employment, public economy, accommodations and housing is a serious threat to the health, safety, and general welfare of the community. Discrimination is a threat to our community. So Buck, the bathrooms are down the hall by the elevator, use whichever you'd like. California has taken this a step further by actually changing many of their bathroom signs to a triangle in a circle that means, wait for it, bathroom. I would have gone with the rounded swoop swoop shape of a butt that we used in the 1700s to mark toilets, but triangles are simple and inclusive too. We've made Sexplanations versions of both for you to print off and hang on your own stalls. Before you go do that though, let's address some of the biggest concerns with freely accessible toilets. Number one, cooties. This is the idea that one group is cleaner and more pure than another. Like the ideology of racial taint, that black people are going to dirty white people if they share toilets. This is racism. Or thinking boys or girls have cooties? That's sexism. Reject 
Inject both. Two, people are gonna see my genitals. This is no different with this sign or this one. If there are people around and you're naked, then they may see your genitals. But why are we trying to maintain Victorian ideals of genital mystery anyway? That you'll have to wait until our wedding night to learn where my urine comes from. If you're not intentionally flashing someone or disrespecting boundaries, then there should be no shame or sense of loss. And three, there's this fear that penises and vaginas in the same bathroom will lead to sexual assault. If I go into a bathroom and someone else of any sex, gender, genitalia, etc., comes into the bathroom to go to the bathroom, then no sexual assault happens. If I go into a bathroom and someone else of any sex, gender, genitalia, etc., comes into the bathroom to sexually assault me, it isn't because the sign gave them permission. These signs and these toilets ultimately mean one thing. This is a place for relief. How we go to the bathroom will continue to change with time and place. The only thing our sexual health and genitals have to do with it is that we wipe them front to back. Stay curious. According, bah. According, uh, nope, nope, mm -mm. excrement. There were chamber pots that read, keep me clean and use me well, and what I see, I will not tell, and shut up, truck, because I'm trying to do this. Uh.